right, we are coming back. It's Ryan Ripley, Todd Miller, and Pratik Singh. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Good. We're Super. doing a nice little uh, series here on applying the flow metrics and scrum events. Today, this is Todd's day. This is Todd's <laughs> wheelhouse. This is his yeah. favorite event. It's flow metrics in the sprint review. I think we should go ahead and review just for people who have, who have not watched the other videos of flow metrics, throughput, cycle time, item work age, and whip limits, right? The flow, the four flow metrics. And so gentlemen, and when we're thinking about sprint review, and this is where we get together as a scrum team, our stakeholders are present. And of course, a stakeholder could be a customer, a user, a buyer, an internal executive, anyone who has an interest in the outcome of our work. We all get together and we start looking at how things are going. This is not just a demo. And in fact, you don't even have to demo. This is more of a collaborative collaborative discussion about what we should or could do next, how to maximize value, how to assess value. Like it's just such a great discussion. Feedback from the market. How are people using a feature? Wonderful discussion about the product. And it's this, this all angles being discussed. And so when you think about that type of uh, professional scrum event, uh, which of, if any, right, don't want to make assumptions, but which of the flow metrics, if any, would you expect a product owner to perhaps be ready with, maybe a stakeholder to ask about, uh, you know, where do you think these conversations should go uh, in this particular event? Yeah, it's, it's uh, for us, we go kind of back to the very first flow metric we talked about in sprint planning, we're back to that with sprint review, uh, which is throughput. We're, we're talking about throughput again, just in a slightly different way. Um, if, if if you all go back and watch that video, you'll see we talked about <laughs> throughput as a, uh, as a as a way in sprint planning to say how many things can we get done in the sprint, so we can we can decide how much risk we're willing to take on. Here, that question changes a little bit. Now that we've gotten all this feedback, now that we understand a lot more about what we're building. Um, now that we've probably split some items as we were running through uh, through the, that, the, the previous sprint, um, things have changed. Our product backlog might look a little different. Now we can ask the question of, okay, when will we have certain amount of functionality or certain, when can we deliver a certain set of value? Yeah, and you know, I'm going to start off kind of like, curving the conversation into the sprint review and talk about that. Yeah. You mentioned, um, you know, we might have some PBIs that split. We might have new uh, and additional information that created PBIs. Mm -hmm. This is a really good time. If you're a product owner to level set expectations, right? One of the biggest risks you run as a product owner is that there's miss there, that people have expectations um, that are not uh, uh, in line with what's actually happening right? Um, they're not in line with reality. And so this might be a little bit of time to bring that reality. This also might be a little bit of time to say, yeah, we did learn some new stuff. I'm not sure how valid some of the stuff that we learned is, mm -hmm. right? Now, when I say that, I mean, scope creep, right? Uh, <laughs> that can be something else that happens. So this can become a little bit of a session where you're doing a little bit of stakeholder expectation management and saying, all right, great. You want all this stuff, but you want it in the same time, right? So there has to be some kind of trade-off. It's a, 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 Ryan, you were saying the depth of what you can happen in this room. By the way, this should not be the only time you share this information that we're talking about, right? Pratik and yep. Ryan should be, this would be continually something that you're looking at and sharing, especially as new and greater risk is found. Uh, but, but that's where I kind of wanted to steer that conversation because uh, hopefully the scrum team knows this stuff already. This is you meeting with the stakeholders and I'm saying you, this is oftentimes the product manager type product owner that has to have these conversations and, um, and, and based off of these forecasts, what do you think about that? I, Todd, I, I, I think that depth of conversation is such an important topic, right? If we just, and again, I don't, I don't want to go down the, you know, story points are terrible path. We'll, we'll do videos about that in the future. But if we're trying to replace story points in, in the sprint review discussion, I want you to think about what a velocity, it's a lagging indicator of capacity, right? So great. We knew what our capacity was in the past. Instead of just focusing there, we're going to go deeper. So we're going to pull that metric out. We're going to, we're going to 
to use our, our, our throughput. And we're going to use some probabilistic forecasting. And now we can talk about what's possible, not in any, not in a deterministic way, not with some average of story points, which fails to the flaw of averages, especially in a short-term situation, which is, I would call sprints a short-term uh, scenario. But now we can probabilistically look at what could potentially be done over a, a number of sprints, and we can have these this risk assessed, right? So if a stakeholder says, I need these 10 items, and our probabilistic forecast, which is our, our, our throughput with some Monte Carlo simulation says, we're 80% confident that within the next three months, this could happen. Now we get to talk about that 20% risk and what that means. And now we can, as a group, talk about what happens after the next sprint when that risk increases to 30%. Which items can we drop? Which ones can we switch around? And what I love about this conversation, look, the maths, it's that's all fascinating. And, and future videos will cover how all that works. But what I love is we are no longer having an emotional discussion about scope. We are having a probabilistic discussion about scope in the context of risk, and we're allowing people to decide how much risk they're willing to accept. Mm. That's a totally different conversation than, I don't care what you say, I need these 10 items, and, and just an argument. It is, we'll, we will work on those 10 items, but there's a 50% risk that they all won't be done by the date you said you need them by. What do you want to do? What new and better decision would you like to make? You're empowering people to make new and better decisions sooner the conversation is deeper. And I think this is a far more powerful discussion as opposed to, hey, our velocity was 10, which means our capacity in the last sprint was 10. Now what? Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, there's such a, there's a different than, difference in depth. You know, what do you guys think? It's, it's like moving from having just black and white movies to all of a sudden you have color like yep <laughs> it's, it's it's the wizard of oz all of a sudden everything's in color and now we can have the, the conversation about the entire spectrum of options that are in front of us instead of just one or zero whether we'll be done or not um and todd brought up a great point of you know scope scope creep happens but we need to start looking at scope creep as actually risk creep yep. so risk is creeping up now let's have the conversation how do we bring that back down. Well, and what's interesting too, is the conversation shifts a little bit because sometimes there will be the, the discussion, we'll just do more things. Fine. But if we increase our whip, what happens to cycle time and throughput, right? Little's law is in effect. And now we don't use little law, little's law to forecast, but we can certainly use little's law to illustrate the impact of trying to push more things through our, our system of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically bad things happen right? The, the intended or desired result will not occur. And so we can actually use these tools to discourage the anti-patterns, to have deeper conversations other than just what our capacity was. Uh, and it, I think it allows stakeholders to really understand the risk behind uh, the decision they're making, because far too often, I don't know what you guys think here, but do, they, do we really actually have a, a good picture of the trade-offs we're making, right? When a stakeholder demands a date, do they really understand the risk they're taking on in a typical scrum team situation? I would argue the answer is no. And, you know, teeing this up uh, um, about these conversations, uh, Pratik, you know, I, I want you to elaborate on these because you did, um, in the first video, you mentioned as we come into sprint planning, we talk about doing a Monte Carlo simulation with throughput, giving a probability about uh, uh, how, how many. There's other options, mm -hmm. right? So, and some of those other options might shine for you on how you run a Monte Carlo simulation. Am I teeing you up here okay? Do you know where I'm headed with this? I, I'm not really sure where you're going with it. But <laughs> no, so what if you set an expectation around a probability around when? Oh, yeah. And that's that, That's where, for at least the way I have thought about this in the past, the when is, to me, more of a sprint review thing yep. of mm -hmm. saying, um, yeah. you want all these things? Well, we we took we took our real data that we produced, uh, we understood our rate at which we're getting things done, which is throughput, mm -hmm. ran it through thousands of simulations. And based on that, we have this, this, this spectrum of uh, options that you can pick from. Um, yeah. I'm 90% confident we can be done by sprint number 57 and 80% confident by 53 and 50% confidence by sprint 41. 
how much risk are you willing to take? Yeah, and 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 that's where it's kind of teeing up there is that this is a different. So sprint planning is um, how many sprint if yeah. you uh, when, and that that when could very well have changed on you, yeah. right? And and that's where the risk comes in. That's what you're reiterating. I'm just trying to repaint it a little bit here um, in uh, Googleable stuff, <laughs> but but that could have changed. And, and that the reason for change, as you're highlighting, is risk. And that's something that a product owner needs to step in and manage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because if that when has changed and maybe changed not to your liking, um, then, it, then it really starts to become, uh, uh, you might have to talk to your stakeholders more frequently than a mm -hmm. What's happening? This thing is not what we thought it was, or there is bigger than we thought it was, or harder than we thought. All, all these other things that could come into play and impact that now it's time to step up and manage our product back all gonna in a way that, that that will get us into the market or something like that so i just i thought it'd be cool here to uh, you know kind of delineate the difference between monte carlo simulation for how many and a monte carlo simulation for when how many is really good for for sprint planning yep. when is really good for sprint review well, and Todd, it took me a long time to summarize that. No, I, I think it's it's probably it's probably the most important point of the video. So I'm glad you took some time there. Um, but I think it, it's also interesting that you know to steal a, a point of yours from a, a past video, this isn't the only time we talk about when yeah. a product owner should be updating this the second we learn something new. And so it could be day three of a sprint, something happens, we should have a new projection of when available for our stakeholders. Right. We and there's tooling that allows us to do that frequently and easily. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we learn things, we we reforecast just like the weather and it creates new and oper new and better opportunities to make new and better decisions. And so that's I, I think this is the, the power of agility being unleashed across an organization. The ability to make a new and better decision sooner is invaluable. You're basically buying time, which is amazing. Right. What a, what a wonderful trick to be able to pull off. Yeah, I think for me, the definition of agility is figuring out how wrong you are as quickly as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allowing you to do that. Perfect. Anything else we would add to the sprint review discussion? I think you guys have done well. There's certainly far more that we could talk about in this space, uh, but we have to restrict ourselves. Otherwise, uh, you would all drift off and stop watching. If you want to learn more about uh, the flow metrics for scrum teams, specifically in the scrum events, as we're talking through these videos, there is a class coming up. Todd, uh, myself and Daniel Vacanti will be teaching one here upcoming in March. There will be plenty of other opportunities also on the website. Check out the link in the description. Uh, we also want to encourage you to uh, get some education with Pratik. He's teaching applying professional Kanban, applying metrics for predictability, and Agile Work Slicing, uh, three great classes and topics. We hope you'll join Pratik. The information is uh, in the description below. Uh, but if you're interested in this particular topic about the sprint review, you're going to get a lot out of this flow metrics for Scrum teams. Uh, we hope you can join us. And again, everything's in the, in the description. So be sure to check that out as well. Gentlemen, I think we've covered it for this time. What I'm going to do is pull up the end screen. And we're going to encourage everyone to check out the socials. Be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Uh, we do have other videos coming out with Pratik soon. You don't want to miss that. So hit that bell and uh, be sure to check out all the great learning that's going to come from him. Uh, for Todd and Pratik, I'm Ryan. Go forward and do some great flow metric-y type things. And we'll see you next time.